Hello, my name is uh, Antti Pulkkinen and I work at the uh, Catholic University of America and uh, NASA Goddard Space Flight Center's uh, Space with a Laboratory. And in this tutorial uh, I will discuss an example coral mass ejection or uh, a CME analysis process using integrated space with analysis system ISWA. Uh, what I will do here, uh, I will uh, generate a flow chart uh, that gives you an example uh, a process for detecting and analyzing uh, coronal mass ejection events and then I will actually show you a, a real-life example of this process uh, using the, uh, the, the products that we have available through the other ISPA system. Alright, so uh, the first step that you need to carry out in, 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 in uh, setting up this process is of course uh, uh, you have to set up your uh, ISPA displays. So set up uh, your, uh, your ISPA displays. Uh, this is the other first necessary step to get, get you going. Um, the next step uh, we will uh, 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 identify here uh, is uh, now the first part of the actual cir cir circular process that we'll be uh, generating here and the, the first step in this is you need to identify if there are any significant moving objects in, in the other display displays that you uh, set up significant moving uh, objects uh, in the display display question mark okay. so this is the, the first first step, uh, really the first uh, 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 significant step in, in, in the process. And this question leads to uh, two different branches in, in our uh, um, uh, uh, process. Uh, let's create here the yes branch and then another branch which is the no branch. Okay. And let's uh, put some text here too. So this is yes branch. And, and this is the node branch. And uh, we will discuss uh, the node branch a little bit more in detail first. So, um, you have your displays up. Um, uh, you did not uh, detect any significant moving objects in your displays, uh, which leads you to the node branch. So, the next step is that uh, uh, you can actually uh, sit back and then relax a little bit. Relax for uh, xx um, minutes. Uh, 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 the the xx uh, is determined uh, 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 by the need for timeliness of uh, detection of the CMEs, and also determined by me by, uh, in terms of uh, uh, temporal cadence of the uh, displays that you set up for for these purposes. The chronograph imagery that I will be using later on in the actual example have typical cadences varying from uh, 15 to 30 minutes. So, uh, for example, uh, for uh, my applications, the XX would be something in the range from, from 15 to 30 minutes or so. Okay. So, and then next step is, is uh, once you have relaxed for a little while, then you uh, refresh the displays. Refresh the displays. Uh, and let's make the uh, part of the flow here too. And 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 once once you have done that, uh, uh, you will go to the beginning uh, of the process itself uh, and identify if there are any significant moving objects in the ice display. Now, of course, this uh, 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 branch of the uh, the process operates as long as there are no significant moving objects in your eyes displays. But the other, of course the, uh, the other actions change if you do indeed ident identify something significant moving in the other eyes displays that you have set up. And if this is the case then uh, the, the first step in the other yes branch is you have to or you should uh, identify, uh, identify the other spacecrafts uh, that see uh, see the, the moving object object okay 
<coughs> and once you have uh, uh, have done that, then you can start to carry out uh, uh, a little bit more in detail, uh, detailed analysis. Uh, uh, in the next step, you can uh, identify, for example, uh, what is the, the direction uh, of, of the CME. Uh, so, uh, determine, determine the direction. Let's say propagation, uh, propagation direction of the uh, object. Object, an object, of course, in our in our case, would typically be uh, a coronal mass ejection. Once you have done that, uh, you will go uh, to the, the final step in in the ES branch, uh, uh, which is uh, further actions. Uh, uh, it's just generally. Further, further actions. Uh, this could be, you know, uh, 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 more detailed uh, analysis, uh, alerts, uh, and so forth. Uh, don't need to specify them uh, them here any any further. Um, uh, let's make this a little bit nicer. Nicer. Okay, and uh, uh, okay, that's satisfactory. So, and then once you have carried out the further actions, uh, for example, more detailed analysis of these moving objects or, or coronal mass ejection, send your alerts and so forth, uh, you can return to the uh, the, the uh, core part of the process uh, by means of uh, jumping to this part of. Uh, the, uh, the, uh, the 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 uh, the process you refresh your display displays and then go sort of uh, to the beginning point of the process itself and again this starts to repeat itself uh, if there are no further moving objects in the displays uh, and this uh, goes along as long as there's nothing interesting in the displays and once again you identify something of interest you go to yes branch and then follow the uh, the, uh, the the further analysis that follow. Uh, for follow the identification of this uh, object in the displays. All right. So, but how does this work in in practice? And then to to show this, uh, 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 let's go to uh, integrated space with the analysis system. Let me clear the other displays. Let's bring build the whole display uh, uh, from scratch. So, <clears throat> the first initial step uh, in the analysis was to set up. Uh, your eyes for displays and let's do that here. So now that we are interested in coronal mass ejections, uh, of course the, the primary instrumentation of your interest are uh, 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 chronographs. So let's bring in uh, uh, some chronograph data into this displays. Let's bring in, uh, use the gallery tool for stereo A and B. Uh, let's put this a B above here. Uh, bring stereo a little bit further down, and then of course we have chronograph imagery uh, coming also from Soho. So let's bring in the gallery tool also for uh, Soho here, and the gallery tool uh, shows uh, a sequence of, of of latest images from from each individual instrument. Um, uh, for the sake of completeness, let's bring in also uh, 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 Individual frame uh, displays uh, here. Uh, first, let's go C3, and, and, and then let's bring stereo B and then A also. Uh, and um, what is interest uh, interesting with these is that uh, let's put behind there and stereo ahead here is that you can play these things also in in, in movie mode. So uh, if you press the, the movie mode here, it brings in uh, a few, some of the latest uh, frames uh, into the imagery and then it loops that for, for you. And here is essentially the same thing uh, using the, uh, the sequence of, 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 of still imagery. So now we have uh, set up our ISO displays and then we can go to the actual first step of the process. So we need to identify if there are any significant moving objects 
in the, the ISO displays that we just set up. Now, uh, for purpose of demonstration, let's use the global date time functionality of the integrated space of the analysis system. And let's go to uh, September 22nd and, and pretend that, that, that we are living at uh, September tw uh, 20, 22nd right, right now. Or actually, let's go to September 21st. And let's go to uh, at 10 30 uh, p.m. UT time and update all the other uh, displays to that time. So the first step was to, to identify uh, if there are any significant moving objects in the imagery. And, and uh, even though there seems to be uh, something uh, around here uh, in, in the uh, 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 stereo A and B imagery, that is a very faint structure and, and really is, is not uh, significant and definitely is not a very a signature of, of a strong C and E. So uh, in this case uh, we would go to a no branch of our process. Now we can relax for, for uh, 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 say for 15 minutes. So and, and let's pretend that we have relaxed for the other 15 minutes and, and then we can move the time uh, 15 minutes ahead to 10.45 and let's update the displays again and uh, again we can uh, check if, if we see any uh, significant moving objects in the displays uh, uh, there is nothing really uh, too significant in these displays uh, so we follow again so there, there are nothing of interest so we can relax again for, for another 15 minutes or so uh, and, and then we refresh uh, displays. Let's go now uh, for the purpose of demonstration a little bit further let's go to uh, I'll say 11.30 so we have repeated this uh, this uh, uh, cycle for a few times uh, and now the, of course the situation changes quite a bit so now we can start to see that there is some uh, something significant in the uh, uh, in the um, all, all of the imagery, so we have moving object here uh, in the, the stereo B imagery. We do have already uh, uh, an object moving object also in Soho Alaska C3, and we do see also moving the same moving object in stereo A imagery. And then you know that that conclusion is is uh, also confirmed by by uh, by these uh, movies. Uh, in the bottom of our uh, ISO displays. So what follows next? So we need to identify spacecraft that see the object. Uh, so we already did this. So all uh, stereo behind uh, uh, Soho and uh, stereo ahead can see uh, uh, the, uh, the, the object. Uh, the next step is to determine the, uh, the propagation direction of the object. Okay, so how do we do that? Uh, for that purpose, let's uh, go ahead bring in information about the, the stereo location. So uh, you can access this site if, if uh, you uh, Google where is stereo and, and take the first link. And, and then we have a stereo orbit tool to go for this historical event. So we were looking at uh, September 21st. So let's bring in uh, the location of stereo. September 21st. So here's the uh, the ecliptic plane. The stereo B location is here. Stereo ahead is here, and the Earth is here. So planets and spacecraft are moving this direction uh, in the ecliptic plane. And of course, Soho spacecraft is in this scale very close to the uh, the, the Earth. Uh, uh, the Soho Lagrange one point where Soho is located is about 100 of uh, distance between uh, the, between the Earth and the Sun from the Earth, so it's, it's really close to the Earth in, in, in these scales. So, uh, in ISO displays uh, we see that uh, uh, the, the, the coronal mass ejection in SOHO imagery is going to the right and in the stereo behind imagery the same CME is going to the left. So what can we say about the direction? So, imaging from the Earth we have something going to the right and from the B we see something going to the left. So that gives an indication that you know the CME needs to be propagating uh, uh, this direction. Uh, that there, if it's going to this direction then you would see uh, 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 
propagation towards the left from B and then to the right from, from the other SOHO. So we can uh, uh, confirm uh, using these observations that uh, CME is actually propagating to the sort of to the back side uh, of the Sun and most likely will not hit for example the orbit of the Earth. However, the orbit of the Mercury actually can be impacted by the CME. Okay. So we have determined the, the propagation direction of the object uh, then we can carry out further actions, you know, we can uh, uh, send alerts if necessary. For example, in this case, if we're interested in only, only Earth-directed uh, uh, CMEs, we would probably not issue alerts or do anything like that. And then we can jump back to the, uh, the process, the core part of the process itself. We can refresh the displays. Uh, uh, let's, for example, refresh our displays to the very latest imagery. Uh, uh, well, what we are seeing right now at the time of the generation of this tutorial and uh, there is really nothing uh, uh, significant uh, propagating in the, the imagery at this point of time so we go back to the uh, 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 relaxing process and the other process uh, goes on and on and on from there on. so that's uh, uh, an example process that you can follow uh, uh, to detect and, and, and uh, briefly analyze coronal mass ejections using an integrated space with the analysis system. And that ends uh, our tutorial.